So a key aspect of thermochemistry then is the determination of energy release from a given chemical reaction. Now in the conversion of ATP to ADP, this is actually a very difficult thing to do. But to demonstrate how we can measure the energy content intrinsic to the difference in the bonding structure between reactants and products, let's take a simple example but a very important one, and that's the common liquid fuel, gasoline. We can diagram this energy release by recognizing that the molecule of gasoline reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. And we need to balance the number of carbon atoms on the left and right hand side of the reaction as well as hydrogen and oxygen. And we know because we can burn gasoline, the energy is released when that carbon-hydrogen structure and oxygen are converted to CO2 and water. So let's see how we might do this. Let's start out and take a 100 kilogram steel box. And into that steel box, we'll add a thermometer so we can measure the temperature, in particular the rise in temperature as the fuel burns. We want to be able to add the fuel to this flame to sustain it and add exactly, for example, one liter of fuel and measure the change in temperature of that box. We also have an insulation around the outside that traps all of the heat generated in that chemical reaction within the steel structure of the box that surrounds it. So this experimental apparatus that we've set up comes down to a remarkable principle, and that is that the change in temperature of that steel box is proportional to the amount of energy entering the mass of the material. And we'll see in thermodynamics why this is true to a remarkable level of accuracy, but it's also quite surprising on the face of it when you think about that perfect proportionality between a temperature change and the energy entering that steel box. Now, if we're going to calculate the amount of energy entering this mass M, this 100 kilogram steel box, we need a proportionality factor between that change in temperature and the amount of energy released in the reaction of gasoline with oxygen. And that proportionality constant is called the heat capacity of the steel box. And that is the heat capacity tells you the temperature change per unit of energy entering that material. So this provides the basis for the direct measurement of the chemical release of energy from the reaction of gasoline and oxygen. So now we're ready to do the calculation because the energy release from one liter of gasoline is going to be equal to the heat capacity, that's the amount of energy per unit change in temperature, times the change in temperature. So let's start out with the steel box at room temperature, 20 degrees C. And let's add fuel, gasoline, to the flame inside the box, very carefully adding it to sustain the chemical reaction. And when we finish adding a liter of gasoline, the temperature of that box is 760 degrees Celsius. So the change in temperature then is equal to 760 degrees Celsius minus the initial temperature, 20 degrees Celsius, and that's equal to 740 degrees Celsius. So we put 740 degrees Celsius in for the change in temperature. We put the heat capacity of that box in, and that immediately allows us to calculate that from that one liter of gasoline, 3.4 times 10 to the 4 kilojoules of energy was released. So we've made a very important measurement. And we can sketch that physical entity in our model by recognizing that we're adding gasoline and oxygen to the flame, we're producing CO2 and water, but all of that energy goes into heat. There's no useful work that's coming out of this. And the remarkable thing is that if we look at the numbers involved here, a liter of gasoline weighs 0.8 kilograms. It produces 3.4 times 10 to the 7 joules per 0.8 kilograms. That's equal to 4.3 times 
10 to the 7 joules of energy per kilogram of fuel. Now just to put that into perspective, that's a factor of 15 times the energy content of TNT, a highly explosive material. So gasoline per unit mass has 15 times the energy content of dynamite. And this tells you how potent the chemical content of gasoline is. But this story also has another important aspect to it that we will develop, and that is that we just ran an experiment where we basically added gasoline and oxygen to produce heat. Suppose we put that gasoline into an automobile, into an automobile engine. Now we can draw that out in the same way we did the, the flame, and that is we're combining gasoline and oxygen, producing CO2 and water. We're producing heat, but we're also producing work. But look at that contrast. Only 15% of that chemical energy that went into that engine comes out as usable motive force driving that automobile forward. And this is an idea, this is a topic of extreme importance because of the very, very small amount of actual usable work that comes from a heat engine. That is an engine that converts a fuel, a chemical fuel, to work and to heat. And we'll see this play out in a very important way at the national level.